TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family. From Chicago to the UK. And don't forget, just because we're not live when you're seeing this, doesn't mean you can't go on twitch.com, type in T-H-E-E underscore L-I-T underscore O-N-E, and watch any of the lives. You feel me? Patreon as well. We got a Patreon we post Monday through Friday. Sometimes Saturday and Sunday too, depending on what we watch. Y'all should really go look at the Patreon. It's a lot going on over there that y'all don't even know about because y'all think I'm just waffling and talking. A lot of y'all skip this part, but that's on you. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget we got merch too. The link to all of this is down in the description. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Secrets and lies. Talk to me. We got to go back to season three and do all the specials because I stopped. There was like four more specials that I didn't do, but okay, I'm going to go back and watch it now. Before we start season five, too. The number of privately rented households has doubled in the last 15 years, with more than half of tenants now renting in the private sector. But evictions have soared, increasing by over 30% since 2007. Back before the pandemic, which this was before the pandemic, this got really popular in America, too. We figured it out. Oh, we don't have great, um, we don't got great credit. You got not enough credit. Uh, you don't go to a company that, you don't go through a big company, like a leasing big company to get a place. You go to private owners and you appeal to their heart. But see, y'all messing up the game right now. <laughs> y'all messing it all up. That ain't even a thing no more, really. It is, but like, now they vigorously checking. Like, it ain't good. They ain't going like that no more. Eight a.m. North London. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner work across the south of England enforcing writs and repossessing properties. Today we're off to uh, Cricklewood uh, with a writ of possession. I don't know if it's a mister or a miss. They're on their way to evict. Be careful. You better figure it out. Be careful. you get cancelled. Tenant Kekwadongu and her family, who've ignored several court orders telling them to leave. We'll just look for the number. What's up, Jamie? It's on our left. It's hot there. I'm gonna watch something after this that nobody would expect me to watch either. It's more for the ladies, though. I'm gonna watch it now. Oh, I think they're ready for us. But this job isn't going to be straightforward. Good morning. Uh, well, it's nine o'clock, no? Yeah. What's significant about nine o'clock? That's what we were told, nine. Oh, right. Yeah. This is a mop I'd work out. The family claim they have a letter telling them the eviction would begin at nine and are protesting about the early arrival of the agents. Good morning. It's nine o'clock. You, you can't come in. It's supposed to be nine o'clock, Chief. There is no time. I don't know yeah, who... Yeah, but that's the time they give us nine o'clock. That's what I'm trying to blame this. The writ gives the agent's authority to enter the property at he might as well give them till nine. What time was it? Any time. Kekwa comes down to back up the father of her children. No, they're going to see nine o'clock. Oh god. It's okay, you don't have to be out until nine, so you've got that's a bonus. There's always something. Oh, you go, you go wait outside, please. No. <laughs> Paul wants to remain by the door just in case the tenants try and lock themselves in. So are you in on that because it's quite cold? No. This is no longer your house. OK, so why are you standing by the edge? Because that's what I do. That's what you do? Yeah, just, stand by, just stand by the edge? That's right, yeah. To make sure you don't slam the door. Sorry? Oh, to make sure you don't slam the door. You're quite funny, you know? I am, yeah. Quite funny. You think you're funny? Yeah? Cool. People have to move their stuff. You're always standing on the floor. You should move down there, they're moving the stuff. Well, when you're ready, 
Kekwa and her family have just one hour to pack their essentials and leave. But instead, they're still arguing over the timing of the eviction. Look, I'm not being objectionable. Why are you being objectionable? You know, we've been perfectly civilised and you seem to be a bit unreasonable. Tenants get rude and angry because... They're already mad about what's going on today. You know what I'm saying? Like... Steve and Paul are Honestly, cool though. Like they they they're more down to earth. But anybody walking into this state, this 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 situation is you're gonna be mad at them. Like it don't matter. Well, they don't want to meet us. We're asking them to leave their home, so they are gonna be angry. If you try and shout, you've lost. It's just a no-win situation. With all due respect, and I understand that you've been no, you told... Don't, you don't understand that. I do understand that. You you've been told... You can't be inside the house. You're saying you don't understand Forget that. about the letter and all of that. Out of respect, you can't even give us, you know, half an hour to sort of get off things up. You have. You have, yeah, you have the hour. You have the hour. I don't know why you're making all this fuss. Just get packed and go. If you could get out of the way, we could actually do it quicker. You've got an hour to clear the stuff out, so no problem. If you've got until now to leave, why are you here? We give you an hour to get your stuff together. No, no, nobody told. Listen very carefully. Nobody told us nine o'clock. You listen very carefully. Okay. Don't touch me like that. All right. You're saying you've got up until nine. Yeah. We're saying if you've got up until nine, why are you in here when it's not nine o'clock? Because they told us eight. And they told us nine. Oh, so, sorry, we'll get them here and we'll argue it out. This guy, you were all the same. The reason the tenants make issues out of things that otherwise are dead. No, it's really irrelevant at this point, though. Like, at this point, the tenant, you know, they just want to win some battle. They want to win a battle because they lost the war. They want to win the little side quest or something. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the reason why they're getting out. They, they ain't paid rent as far as, I'm, as far as I know. If you don't pay rent, you got to get out. It's as simple as that. Like, if I decided to stop paying rent right now and a, and a sheriff came to my door, I would get out because I know what I did. Ain't no arguing it. And it don't matter my situation because they they don't care. I signed a lease at the beginning of my stay that said I would pay the rent on time every month. And as soon as you have a contractual obligation and you break that, it's over. I don't know why y'all be getting mad, some of y'all. Like, you didn't pay rent. Get the fuck, get out. <laughs> now, there are situations where it'd be bogus. Some of these landlords be like, like wilding and things of that nature. And they be slumlords where I understand. But like, the basis of some of these, like, you ain't pay rent. All right. What do you expect? I don't feel bad for you definitely irrelevant is that it diverts their mind from the main thrust of the situation. They're going to be evicted. They're just looking for reasons to, in their mind, discredit us. Kekwa's son decides to start filming Paul on his phone. You don't care if it's as funny coming to people's houses, getting out I don't think house. it's funny at all. You do think it's funny, but you don't seem to care. I do care. You don't? OK, I don't care. You don't? <laughs> all right, then I don't care. I'll go with you, whatever you want. No, no, it's not with me. It's You're wasting your time with that. I've got until now, so I can stay and record you up until now. I'm open. OK. Yeah. <sighs> so what's your name, Mr Clark? My name is... Um, Paul Bowhill. Yeah. The name suits you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, sir. It's kind of you to say, sir. What's your name? Clark. Don't worry about my name. My name is... Steve Pinner. Look at that big smile on the station. I'm just pleasant. Why are you going? I'm going to stand there. With the situation becoming confrontational, the agents need the family to focus on getting ready to leave. Ugh. I'm not, not the sin. <laughs> I will be miffed. Live it, live it, live it. It's nine o'clock. The tenant's hour to pack is up and they must leave. I'm going to get a clicker. Key phrase, nine o'clock, nine o'clock. 47 times so far, we've heard nine o'clock. 
but Kekwa's son wants to go back in to fetch more belongings. You don't listen to us, we're not listen to you. Simple as. You can't excuse come back me, excuse in. me. No, you can't come back in. What do you mean I can't come back That's in? That's it, 9 o'clock. Why are you touching told? me for? You've got to go, you've got to go. Can you not touch me? You're not touching me like that. Okay, you can't come like again. All right. What started as a simple repossession has turned into a, a volatile situation. Chug me back, you're probably breaking rules, but don't chug me again, please. You keep barging me, I don't like it. This don't barge keep me. Going. Don't barge me. This should be What's seen as a soul, because you're forced to the house. It's, it's trespassing also, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're being tit for tat, you're being petty, it should be seen as assault. Well, you're trespassing, it's private property at this time. Nine o'clock, you're supposed to be out. Anytime after that is private property and you're trespassed on it. So if you're inside private property and there's somebody there, they have the right to try to remove you from there, right? Every action has a reaction, man. I understand they mad. You know what I'm saying? It's a hard time for them right now. It's difficult. They have, what, tempers and emotions are everywhere. But, hey, listen. Yes. Yes. And people wonder, have I ever been evicted? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been in this situation, and guess what I did? I got out. <laughs> it didn't even come to this, though. So... I don't feel no bad. Don't, don't don't come at me with no sob story. I when I got it when I was in trouble, couldn't pay, got out. Cause I was bogus. I didn't do what I was supposed to do, so therefore I had to leave. It's, it's very simple. You got to man up to your to your shortcomings and things of that nature. You just got to take responsibility. You can't refl You can't project on the other. What well, he did? They just projecting. You're giving me as well. Paul, You're giving me as well. Paul and Steve need to act quickly to stop this eviction turning nasty. That's assault. Just assault. call the police. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner were in Cricklewood, North London, carrying out an eviction. This is no longer your house. Okay, so why are you standing by the edge? No, they're going to see my o'clock. Can you answer the question? The tenant, Kekwa Dongu and her family, claimed the agents had arrived an hour early. Oh, you're going to wait outside, please? No. Instead of packing to leave... <laughs> leave it, leave it, leave it. ...the family argued with the agents. Listen very carefully. Listen Nobody well, told no, us... No, no, no. You listen ...nine o'clock. You listen very carefully. OK. okay. When Paul stopped Kekwa's son from re-entering the house... Excuse me, excuse me. No, you can't come back in. ...tempers boiled over. I'm not you back, you're probably breaking rules, but don't show me again, please. You keep barging me, I don't like it. Don't Listen, barge keep me. Keep going. Now the agents need to get... Now, I say all of that to say... Let's continue to get negative, though, at the same time. You feel me? But I don't condone it, you two. I just gave a speech. You feel me? The situation under control before things get out of hand. Just call assault. the police. What can you call the police then? Because nobody's assaulting me. Yes, then it's in carry on our for water to him. No, it's just water there. Is that for throwing over us yeah. as the last, do you reckon? She should have throw water to you, as I said. If you do that, sir, that's assault. You can't do that either. To ease the tension, the agents allow the tenants an extra 15 minutes to pack. Paul and Steve need to give Kekwa, or the children's father, a copy of the writ so they can seek emergency accommodation for themselves and the four children. Can I just explain something just very shortly? Nobody... You gets... know, we're spending our time, you know? So Nobody... like you're taking our time for nothing, we can't even okay. do what you're doing. The father of Kekwa's children refuses to take the writ. Concerned for their welfare, Paul gives it directly to one of Kekwa's daughters. This paper, if it's taken to the council office, because there are children involved, they will have to get you emergency accommodation. Wait till they've calmed down, though, but that's the writ. I'm sorry there is such an upset. We are very caring people. I'm angry, I'm angry with Yeah. I get scared. We are very caring people. It's OK, it's the worst day of their lives, isn't it? There is never a good day to have your home repossessed. The agents need to make sure the writ gets passed to one of the parents before they leave. That's the piece of paper you need to take to the council, OK? So whatever you do, do not lose that piece of paper. The eviction is almost complete. 
Nobody else in here, is there? I don't think so. Steve looks around the house to see what possessions are left, but he's in for a shock. Well, how on earth can you live like this? Jesus. It never ceases to amaze me how cluttered and dirty some of the properties are. And you have to actually climb over stuff to get into the... Now, now I will say, they were packing. They knew y'all was coming. That's probably why it was all stacked up like that. Now, come on now, y'all. Different rooms. Come on, Steve. I, I just don't know how people oh, okay. live Okay, like all right. The family have now had okay. their extra 15 minutes. Their time in the house is this up. It's a big house. Let's just leave. They don't care. They're just doing their job. I don't hate them for that, but they're just doing their job. There you go. Now you got some sense to you. That's your job. It's not your fault. It's your job. They're stopping them. Thank you. Yeah. Right. You see now they're stopping. They're stopping them. Are you twins? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they're asking why. Maybe cousins. Kekwa and her family are now homeless and face an uncertain future. It might seem that your tensions are getting frayed, but at the end of the day, you just got to let them go on with it. They shout, rant and rave and moan at us. But they're going to go. And that's the bottom line, you know. As unfortunate as it is for them, there is no going back. Yeah, it's definitely an unfortunate situation. You know, but circumstances put them in this situation and they could be... Across the UK, the level of personal debt is on the rise. In the last year alone, total personal debt has climbed by 32 billion. Yeah, I got evicted and everything. I had a writ of possession and everything. I knew, I, and all of that. I know, that's why I be watching this show. Because it's familiar. <laughs> In hindsight, I can look back and be like, it's kind of funny, I got it, that's tough. But like, you know. Billion pounds. Broadstairs, Kent. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are on their way to recover nearly £12,000 worth of unpaid rent owed to a landlord. Okay, oh, so they've got to see, uh, Miss Alexandra Donkin and Mr Mark Howe. We need to collect £11,896.66. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, he's out of a few quid, isn't he? It's a lot of bloody money. The debt is for a previous property Alexandra and Mark rented. But if they can't or won't pay, the agents can seize goods to offset the debt today. The writ authorises the agents to make peaceful entry through open doors. Hello, High Court Enforcement. Hello, mate, how are you? Hello. How are you? Who is Mr Mark Howe? No. I'm here with a High Court writ for Alexandra Donkin and Mark Howe. Are you the tenant here now? Okay, who's the tenant? Mark Howe. Mark Howe, cool. Can you get on the phone, please, sir? No. No? Okay, cool. This response makes Brian suspicious. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely him. I'll take it your mark then, yeah? Your mark, yeah? We need to discuss it and resolve it in the right way. All right. So are you Mark then, yeah? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Mark. When somebody doesn't want to identify themselves when I visit, it shows me their intention. They don't want to pay. But it's stupid, it's silly. We're going to find out who you are, it's just a matter of time when. Now that Mark has confirmed his identity, Brian can serve him the writ and demand payment. I don't mm. owe the rent. So why has he made a claim against you? Because I lived there, but I didn't pay the rent. Mark Obviously. now claims he isn't responsible for the debt. OK, so I'm here to pay £11,896.66, Mark. How would you like to pay it? What if I don't have it? Then we'll look at removing your assets in your home. Do you work? No. Do you claim any benefits? <clears throat> How do you support yourself? She does. OK, do you have... Yeah. Why don't... So why has he gone to court, then? Because he's an arse. So how can we get this resolved, Mark? 
Yeah, we've got off on the wrong foot. We've come through here and you told me you're not him when you are, OK? Well, I was so that's, shocked. Well, that's fine. I respect that. I understand that. Yeah? Yeah. But I need to get it resolved. Can Alexandra pay it? She can't pay it all in one go, no. How much can she pay today? I've no idea. Should we get on the phone and see what we can do? What was Mark eating chocolate or something? She hasn't got any money at the moment. She hasn't been paid from the job she's doing yet. OK, do you want to have a word with that? Let know what's going on. I'll just go on. Mark isn't cooperating with the agents, so Brian changes tactics. Can you pay me £11,896.66, sir? No. OK, we'll look at your assets to remove, OK? Thank you, Mark. Right, what have you got there, mate? The agents hope the prospect of losing his possessions might prompt Mark to pay. He ain't got but none. as they look around the flat for goods to seize, they're in for a surprise. Why well, have you got a, a sword behind the door, Mark? It's a bit naughty, that. Look, you've got samurai swords in there, mate. If you're going to play the game, I might decide those samurai swords might be a bit of a danger to me. Well, I'm not going to hit you with them. Well, I don't know what you're going to do with them. I'll tell you now, I'm one. Yeah, well, you've got a laptop in there, haven't you? You can't. Why is that, then? I'm using it. Really? <laughs> you were using it. That's now <laughs> belongs to us. <laughs> and, uh, you can't take that. Why? Because I'm using it. <laughs> Hey, shut the front door, y'all. Y'all hear this dude? I ain't want to say nothing because, you know, we all got our different ways we talk, but that was funny. I couldn't even hold it in no more. Whew, okay. If Mark doesn't take any steps to pay the £11,000 he owes, he could lose his possessions. But Brian and Dell want to there. give him another chance. It's a long day, and the weather's horrible. I don't want to give anyone a hard time. If you don't want to cooperate, that's fine, because I just list everything and we'll take it, all right? Now, that's not what I want to do, all right? So if you fix up, I'll fix up, and we'll start to get to the nitty gritty and see how realistically what you can get, what arrangement we can do, right, so we can leave you in peace. Absolutely, yeah. OK? I do not expect you to have £11,000. I'm letting you know that. I want to get to a point where if I need to give Eleven thousand pounds to somebody. Eleven thousand dollars to somebody. I have it. Like that, that. That. Like I know people that are like that. Like, oh, how much you need? You need six thousand here. I got you right now. Like I want to be one of them people. Currently, I am not. But you know, remain hopeful. Remain prayerful. Cause you can't do it on your own. You need faith. <laughs> you feel me? So, you know, in due time. We're realists, yeah? We're going to need today at least £3,000 today just to, to, to set it off. Can you speak to your partner? Just let them know what's going on. Things can happen. We need a lump sum payment. This is the problem. This is, this is the stumbling block at the moment. How much can Probably you get a grand in a couple of days, but today I couldn't get that, and I'm being honest. There's still no sign of payment. But Brian and Dell must get this case resolved one way or another. I'm not being funny. Yeah, I'm gonna walk out with nothing. Right, but it might be a case of taking what we can get instead of wasting too much time here. It's actually just a couple of laptops, a TV. What is that, Nikon? Hey, that's expensive. Is that Nikon? <laughs> that's the money. Lens. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that lens probably more than the camera itself. Yeah. It's clear Mark has. That lens probably like two bands. Just off the size of it, I don't know what brand it was or anything of that nature, but... ...got the means to pay. But the value of the items in the flat doesn't come close to clearing the £11,000 he owes. How about the three? Is there a reason why you're not working? Yeah, I'm suffering liver disease and... Uh, ...depression, anxiety... OK. ...all sorts of things, right? Yeah. OK. This person may be having a... A bit of a difficult time. I feel like in 2024, I don't want to... Anybody's fight is their fight. But I feel like everybody suffers <clears throat> from the last two things he said. Everybody is suffering from a bit of that. There may be some depression issues here. But we still need to make sure everybody's happy and the job's resolved. It's quite difficult. But it's imperative that we take into consideration the whole circumstance that's in front of us.
Mark is still reluctant to offer anything substantial to settle the debt. Over one winter, we got a little bit behind and we made arrangements to pay it, which we did. But it got to a point where the house was not being maintained. We couldn't use the lights, we couldn't use the toilet. Why should I pay a full rent, £600 a month, and not have the place looked after properly? So I decided not to. That was my decision. Bad choice, buddy. That's a bad choice. Given Mark's circumstances, Brian offers him a lifeline. What I'd like to do is get a two grand payment in one week's time and then a £200 a month arrangement. So you can either agree to it or remove your goods. What would you like us to do? If you don't pay it, I will be back here the following day. Do you understand that? Yeah, to do what? To remove your goods. Mark has been offered an extra week to find the money, but his response comes as a shock to the agents. What if I move them out in the meantime? Well, then, okay, then that's what, a whole different ballgame. What will happen? If you were to dispose of them, you'd be committing a criminal offence, all right, because they're not yours to dispose of. The police would be called and you'd be nicked. Now, if I think for one moment that you might, then I would be better off taking them now. Mark's suggestion that he might remove his goods before the agents return forces them to change their approach. Do you know what? I need £2,000 today. Get me £2,000 today or I'm going to remove your goods. I don't like your whole aura. I don't like what I'm hearing. So the next the next discussion we're going to have will be about payment. It don't matter, Mark. If, I mean, boy, if you don't like what you hear... OK, so if you can't get it, I'm just going to remove your goods. Why can't they do things in an amicable way? What, what difference does it make if we pay £2,000 a day? The agents have been in the flat for over an hour. Mark's partner, Alexandra, calls. Hello. Um, we've got bailiffs around the house. And he wants £2,000 today, and I said we haven't got £2,000 today. You haven't been paid. I don't know what you want me to say. No, you stay out of it. You stay out of it, I said. I'm missing all my horse racing doing this. But it's cost me money. I'll bill them for that. Right, OK. With Alexandra unable to provide funds, Brian is forced to give Mark an ultimatum. OK, Mark, you need to get this two grand. Or I'm going to move your goods. I've got a vehicle on the way here now, and I will carry that out. OK? If it turns you on. If it turns me on, not particularly, no. It may turn you on. If you want to take my computer and my television, you do so. I'll do. Mate. Well, I'll, I'll do that because you can't pay the money you owe. I haven't got it on me today. How would you get it? My mother and uh, my sister. How long would it take? Well, I suppose it's just a case of going to the cash point and getting it out. Is it something that could happen today? I don't want to worry my mother because she's unwanted. All the moment's all guesswork, isn't it? You haven't asked anybody. Mark finally starts to try and raise some funds. He calls his sister. Do you want to speak to him? He wanted two. She can only do a thousand. Okay, sorry about this. I'll get it sorted for you tomorrow. Can you give me the 16 numbers? Mark's sister agrees to pay half of the two thousand pounds needed today. My sister's got to contact her husband, so I don't suppose he's gonna be too happy about it. It's just inconvenience other people. But Mark still you needs to raise the other £1,000. You are going to go. So you want me to chase around all night looking for £1,000? We're for £11,000. We're actually being very reasonable and asking for two at the moment. So that's not enough? I need another £1,000. Or you take the stuff? Yeah. Mark decides to go and see his mum to ask for help. I feel angry now. So look at me all you want, that make a difference. <laughs> sleep well tonight, won't you? I'll sleep very well, thanks. You won't when it comes to judgment, Byron. Maybe not. There's no way to live Brian and Dell wait in the flat for Mark. People like Mark, it's everybody else's fault. But you know what? That's what I'm saying. Like, y'all cannot be on Mark's side in the comments. Or anybody watching this, there's no way you're on Mark's side right now. Like, come on. Look at this guy. 
it's your fault I'm standing inside your front room. It's your fault we're having this discussion. Nobody else said, you know what? I don't particularly want to be inside your home. I said, it definitely is. Remember, he chose not to pay the 600 because... I'm sure he was, it was a, something that was wrong that he blew out of proportion and just was like, I'm not paying. Pocket night, having this discussion. I'd rather be at home having a Horlix or a Bovril. Do you know what I mean? An hour later, Mark returns with another £1,000. I've got the card. All right, if you can just sign and telephone number there, Mark. The case is resolved for now. But if Mark doesn't stick to his payment plan, the agents will be back. I just want to say that I'm not here to be difficult. It may seem that way. It's not personal. OK? OK. I appreciate what you've done. I don't want you to know that. All right? Cool. Brian and Dell have got the result they needed in a difficult situation. And y'all got to... Brian tried his hardest. But bro said, what if I remove the stuff from the house? Like, come on now. What, at what, at now what you, why would you even front your move? Like, why would you even allude to that and just instead of, you know what I'm saying? But in Paul and Steve's next case. You can do this. I think you're not human. They meet a woman whose life is turned upside down by a bitter dispute with her landlord. 16 months this has been going on for. Really? And I spent no. six and a half grand. On average, over the last five years, tenants... This might be one of those cases where we can take the landlord, I mean, the tenant's side, because there's a dispute. But let's hear it all. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. ...in the UK have spent more than £40,000 on rent. The average rent now stands at £1,280 a month. It's rising year on year, and more and more tenants are being evicted. Langley, Berkshire. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on the road again to carry out another eviction. There's, there's actually no money on the order. So yeah, theoretically, yeah. it's just a straightforward, no-nonsense repossession. It could be an easy job, or they could just be hiding behind the curtains. The landlord claims he's been trying to get his property back to live in himself, and that his tenants, Habib and Amel Jabali, have refused to leave with their three children. Five, three, oh, that one. Well, that's where the ice Mr. cream goes. Mr. Mr. Now, hang on, you've got to be careful here, because these ice cream men are sometimes known to have loaded 12 balls. <laughs> loaded cones? Well, no, because they actually... Like, and we know Steve and Paul. We know they're nice human beings. They're just doing the job, so it's going... It's like, let me hear it, man. have, like, turf wars, don't they? The landlord claims the dispute with his tenants has been going on for over a year. This eviction is going to test all of Paul and Steve's negotiating skills. Something I prepared earlier. It's not often we get luxuries like this. They've been given a spare key by the landlord. Hello, sir. Mm. Good morning, good afternoon. Hello, sir. My name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a yeah. High Court Enforcement Agent. Right. We have a repossession order for this property. Well, we haven't got any letter to say that. So no, there is no move. letter. I have the letter here. And I'm, I'm all by tomorrow? No, you've got an hour now to pack right. just things you need for today. Right. You can come back and pick the rest of your stuff up right. by arrangement with the landlord. OK. The family have lived in the house for six years. Now Habib has just one hour to pack some essentials for himself, his wife, and their three children. Is that your ice cream, Ben? Yes. I wouldn't mind a large cone. You can't have an ice cream now. Have <laughs> 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 no, the last two days, boss. Fast as you can. Please. Fast I will. As you can. I will. Right. Okay. We, we don't right. want to follow you about. We'll be right. outside. OK. The landlord, Mr. Jalaf, and his father are here to see the tenants evicted. See, now, y'all didn't have to come make a spectacle out of it. Y'all didn't have to come rub salt in the wound. Y'all won. Y'all won. Y'all could just leave. Can I join? Yeah, he's in. OK. They've got okay. an hour to get their stuff out. Cool, fine, brilliant. 16 months this has been going on for. Really? And I spent no. six and a half grand. Wow. 
six and a half grand on this. Jesus. To get them out. I'm going to move in myself, me, my wife, and the kids, and hopefully have a lovely life together. <laughs> the 60 months ago, I Got gave them notice to leave the property. They then turned around and said, I need six, seven months. Um, he was willing to increase the rent, which I didn't want him to do, but he did it himself anyway. But since then, we've been through the courts. Habib denies voluntarily paying more rent in order to stay in the house. You want just money, money. For the last six years, I've cleared them. I had no problem with them, with the payment. She can't afford that suddenly, he want to put his rent up. It's ridiculous. And I can't afford it. You know, the money you're asking for, I can't afford it. But I never missed a payment, never. Half an hour. Okay, now, see, now I'm leaning towards being, on, I'm on the tenant side right now. You was paying your rent, you needed them out, you you, you probably went about it a bogus way. I, I kind of believe that. He was paying rent for six years. Why would he, you know what I'm saying? Into the eviction, wife Amel arrives home with her two-year-old son. Mm. You can do this. I think you're not human. It's unbelievable. Not even receiving nothing. We not receive any letter. How can they do this? We are paying our rent. Everything is updated. I know he's allowed to get his property, but of course, it's, this is really ridiculous. Okay, calm down. Eighteen-year-old son Fedi steps in to help. Okay. Okay. How long have you been leaving us? You've got an hour to get personal things together. Go to see the council. They will give yes. you emergency accommodation straight away. And then you need to speak to the landlord to move them. You gotta stop saying right away. Bro is 18. They're not housing him. They're only housing her and the baby. The rest of the stuff out in the Everybody next Everybody else days, gotta figure it out. Once you've made arrangements with the council. The landlord, you know what? He's asking us to pay 1600 Which the property is 1125 this is his problem. He's he going to move own. back into the house. No, excuse me. No, he wants to kick us out from the house. Despite I, I believe them. To the dispute, the family must leave the house today. I believe you've only got landlord bogus. Got a take with you sufficient to last you for today. <laughs> Go to the council office. I'm going back now. Right. I live in the council every day. I'm in the council. They know about look one. Do. Every time I go, I have to sit for four or five hours. My husband, he's ill, he had a back problem. Now we have to move our stuff. Amel claims that due to her husband's health problems, he hasn't been able to run his ice cream business properly. Now the family... What's your, what's your son doing? No, this is a real question. What is your son doing? 16, 17, 18. 17, 18, man looks strong. You know what I'm saying? He could he could hit that ice cream truck. He can get in there and do his thing. That ain't none of my business, but I'm just saying, like, somebody should have stepped up. They haven't enough money to move. They look for the reference. Because my husband, he doesn't receive any, because he's worked for his own, you know? They ask you for five months deposit. <laughs> Three, three months in advance. How are we going to afford it? He just working only 20 but hours But now that you've been evicted, the council will give you a house. Yes, OK. Uh, and you've now got the letter to okay. tell us. Tenants tell us it's the landlord's fault. You know, they want to do this, they want to do that. Uh, and I try and impress on them that we don't know the landlord like we don't know the, the tenant. We're brought in just specifically to do this job. Um, we have no history with either of them, so we can't take sides. Y'all heard something? He's like this. There's something heavy. Last week was a physiotherapy. And now I've come back again because they're full of staff questions. The agents have been at the property for nearly two hours. 
Amel is still in shock. Of course it's upsetting. Who, who, who accepts going on the street? Nobody. Plus when you have children, I mean, look, the food was already for tonight. Can you imagine? I expect my kids coming from the school to have their dinner. This is unfair. It's just unfair. What you can do? Nothing. Yeah, the landlord bogus. I think he was on some grimy stuff. The tenants have a legal right to return to the property at a later date to collect their possessions. Are they moving everything? Pretty much, that looks like it. But it becomes clear that they want to take everything today. You didn't have to take everything <laughs> now. <laughs> you didn't have to take everything Is now. It? No, we said only your personal effects. Yeah. You can make an arrangement and collect everything else in another day. I don't want to see him no Wait, more. Okay. Off the way. Okay. Young. We are coming across people. I told you that man was 18 and strong as. Look at this man. That's a lazy boy. It reclines. There's stuff in there that makes that heavy. He got it. He should have been in that ice cream truck, handing that, handing out uh, cherry bombs and things of that. We are coming across but people. The land, I'm, say, I'm on the tenant side. I don't want side. the landlord anywhere near my property. I'll get it out now. And we've been on many occasions where the house has been empty in less than an hour. You know, they, they all dig in and get everything out. How are we doing? Are they going OK? Are they? Yeah, all right, yeah. Not I'm going left. No, no, it's all right. We're not, we're not chasing right. it for you. But you don't need to clear all your stuff today. Yeah, but he's going to be in the house, isn't he? Well, he'll have the keys, but what, you know, worries are he can't take the stuff away. We'll walk around and do a video of everything that's in the house. Right. For that for that very reason, for security reasons. So we know, and it's on camera, all right. what's I'll, actually I'll in the house. What a good lad you are. Thank You're you. just steady, absolutely together. Thank you. All right. But if you're my son, I'd be proud of you. I'm sure he is. Thank you. Despite being told they can apply for emergency housing, Mrs. Jabali is still worried she has nowhere to go. What's happened? It's just what people are very bad people. They haven't got hearts, you know? They don't care if you are in the street with the kids or not. Paul and Steve have given the family extra time to pack, but now they must leave the house they've called home for the last six years. I'm going to show you something. It's me as well. There is no place like home. Amel is worried about where the family are going to sleep tonight. Go to the council, Amel. It's a quarter to three. Tonight, I'm sure we're gonna be, we're not gonna be home before 12 or one o'clock in the morning. The eviction is over. Mr. Jalaf has his property back. Kind of feel bad for the tenants, because I gave- Shut, bro. No, you don't. I'm every opportunity to, you know, move out on their own terms. Now, he might have did that, but he, he was doing some forcible stuff, though. I don't believe you're gonna move you know, in. Unfortunately, my hands were tied. You know, it's not a nice thing to do, but you know, I had no choice but to do that. See, now that's a tough one because you can. There's always three sides to the story. One, the tenant, the 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 uh, landlord, and then the truth. Like we don't know nothing. But like, normally with some of these shows, you can like listen and gauge what's going on. But this this episode, like that one, I, I'm just on the tenant side. You don't really know who to. More than eight million households across Britain have no savings at all. And the number of families who have debt problems has increased by almost a third since 2012. Luton, Bedfordshire. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are on their way to recover a four and a half thousand pound debt. 
But this isn't the first time the agents have visited the debtor, Shirley Davis. Oh, all right. We've been here once prior. What's, uh, what's her name again? Shirley Davis. Mm -hmm. She owes Mr. Mustafa Al Naziri $4,496. On their previous visit, Shirley refused to let the agents into her house. First visit when I came with Graham, she um, she went to the top window. I listed some vehicles and put relevant paperwork through to get some sort of reaction, but she hasn't even called. So we might catch them in now. It's six o'clock in here. Let's park down here, see so if we can get in the side, maybe straight away. As this is the agent's second attempt to recover the money for their client, they're not taking any chances. They go round to the back of the house to make sure this time they get in. Hello? Hello? High Court Enforcement, sir. Hello, how are Hello, you? Hello, sir. <laughs> how are you? Not too bad. Sorry to disturb you, sir. We're High Court Enforcement agents. We're looking for Shirley, Shirley Davis. She's not here. Does she live here still? No, she doesn't. Well, what are you looking for her for? She doesn't Well, it's, it's regarding High Court. We've got a High Court writ, sir. I'm her ex-husband. Oh, okay. oh, are you? Yeah. How long have you been her ex for? Well, we're not even divorced yet, but... Well, she... down. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. When I first visited, she was at the top window, so she's here. Does she live here? She's not here. Does she live here? She stays here, so... Oh, OK. OK. Shirley's husband claims she no longer lives at the address, but Dell is suspicious. Do you know Mr. Al Naziri? I don't know. Mustafa. No, That's called don't Mustafa. Know. You don't. Yeah. What's that you're saying? It's a high court writ, so we don't have any information over them. Hold on, I'll be right back. Let me make sure my daughter is still in the bed. I hear too much noise. We have. How much is that? Well, I can't say too much unless you want to pay it for it. Yeah. She's my <laughs> wife after all. She's your wife now? Yeah. So she's not Alex. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not divorced yet. All right. So, so she's Absolutely your wife. Absolutely not. And she lives here. All right, all right then. If, I, if you run into that, we can... We can yeah, when it suits you, yeah. So... All right, so for her, leave a copy of this with well, we left, we've been here too many times. We left letters for her, and she's not phoned, and she's not contacted nobody. Mm. Where is she now? I don't know where she's gone. Do you have a phone number for her? Uh, it's not for me to give her a phone number. Please, let me, let me phone her. Um, so you call her, talk me, to her, me tell her, can am I, I, I going to get you back? Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when people are being evasive with a debt issue, it's actually normal. I expect them to lie. On a few occasions when people are honest, I'm actually quite taken aback, and it makes you want to help them. The agents have been in the house for five minutes when another man suddenly comes into the kitchen. How are you doing, sir? What's up? No problem. What's up? You're looking for mum because she was someone. You're looking for mum? What do you mean so... looking for mum? Looking for who? Who are you coming to look for? What's the name? Shirley really? Davis. There's no Shirley okay, Davis here. Cool. So what do you talk want? Talk to me, talk to me. OK. We've spoken to her husband. If that's your father, I don't know, because you haven't said who you are yet. All right, so I'm taking the view that this is your son, yeah? Okay. So, and I'm taking the view. <laughs> bro walked in the door about 6'6", six, six. <laughs> Two, 250. They was quiet, they was... Oh my God, here it goes. They was, they was all scared, but y'all can be calm. Anybody wearing a sweater with these type of patterns on him? That's a law-abiding citizen who want no smoke, really. So y'all good, continue. That the woman that we've come here to see is your mum. We've spoken to your dad. Your dad's gonna call your mum, so we can try and get this result. Who's he calling, though? There's not, what are you talking He's about, Shirley Davis? It. He knows who it Who's is. Shirley it? Davis? It's your mother we come for. What's your mum? He just told you that. What's the name? He just told you who we come for. Shirley Davis. 
There's no Shirley Davis. What that's are you not what about? That's not what. That's not what. Sarah, don't talk to him. Come out with this attitude. Come to this attitude. There's no attitude here. There's no Shirley Davis. Look, we've already established the facts. Yeah, there's no. There's no Shirley Davis. We've already established the facts. There's no Shirley Davis here. There's no Shirley Davis here. It's a stalemate. Will Brian and Dell ever come face to face with the elusive debtor? Y'all in the house now. Shirley, and get the four and a half thousand pounds they came for. Who's Shirley Davis? That man has clearly been inside of an interrogation room. Brian and Dell were in Luton collecting a debt. Shirley oh, Davis. We don't need. To, we don't need. What's the name? You just talk what? Shirley Davis. Look. The agents suspect both men are holding back the truth. Now they have to skillfully get to the heart of the matter. Speak to your father then if you who don't know, because he's told us. You tell me who Shirley Davis is. Who's Shirley Davis? Oh. 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 You gonna go talk yeah, to it's Shirley. quite difficult when the debtor isn't available to talk to, but when you have family members there who can get hold of her and choose not to put you in contact, it's another wall, it's another obstacle. And I'll prod a little further and I'll ask the appropriate questions till I get the answers I need. So just a bit more, uh, a bit more work like Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, so to speak. So where's this warrant from the High Court? Can well, I see it? But if you don't know who Shirley Davis is, why am I showing you? No, let me see. Yeah, why am I yeah, showing but you? The house. Oh, the the house. The What's your name? name? All right, give me something. Get What's your name? Get me. What's your name? I'm Davis. You're Davis. Yeah. Is that your, that's your surname? Yeah. What's your first name? Sean. All right, Sean. I'm Delroy, OK? The man finally admits he is the debtor's son, Sean. But then his dad returns after speaking to Shirley on the phone. <laughs> oh, man. They got their wires crossed so bogey. She don't know no most different. She don't know most different. Don't know what you're talking about. He no longer wants to cooperate with the agents. Broke into my home. We haven't broken into your yes, home. Yes, you have. You come we in have your car. We have not broken into. We don't need to be authorised, sir. My We've friend. Not, look, I don't. Look, I've not come here to disrespect nobody. You know, mm -hmm. I've explained why I'm here. Mm -hmm. We've come through an unlocked door. Now, so I'm not as leaving say, until we resolve this. My so, right as a citizen of England. I've been commanded to come here by the High Court. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget that. Now, England has commanded him to come here. All right? Sure, but this is private You know property. something? Call the police then so we can do our job, because I can see where this is going. So you tell me what you want to do. There's no payment. Right? OK, so then we need oh, to go and have a look. Fine. Then we need, no to, look, we need to look around the yard then, bro, so we can put this to bed, all right? Y'all can't take the refrigerator? That's a double ref That's a double wide refrigerator. Stainless steel. The freezer as is, as is, as large as the refrigerator. You could probably walk inside of this. This is a walk-in refrigerator. Even in Shirley's absence, Brian and Dell can seize assets to cover the four and a half thousand pound debt. All these things in this house belong to me. Everything in this house is mine. Oh, just let, yeah, I know it's yours, but let him, let him look. If Shirley's husband can't prove the goods in the house belong to him, take the agents away. can take them away. But the bare floorboards on the stairs suggest the family have hit hard times. Is it, is it council or you bought the house? Council. Wow. That's a council house? Wow. Okay. Downstairs, the agents find letters from other debt collection agencies. It soon becomes clear that the assets in the house don't come close to clearing the four and a half thousand pound debt. It's, it's obvious to me that... This is a really nice kitchen. Why is everybody's kitchen always nice? I don't expect you to have four and a half grand in your back pocket. No. You understand me? But some arrangements got to be put in place. It's decent. The only option left is to set up a payment plan. But this can't be done in Shirley's absence. We yeah. need to speak to her so we can assess her, fire, her situation. Yeah. Your dad, is, is he no. retired? Yeah. Okay, situation with mum. Not There's no goods here to cover the debt other than, well... A Samsung television. I'm not going to take the I'm man's television. That. I'm you know not going to take television. I'm inclined you know to what, return this yeah, yeah, that's what I'm do, because yeah. we're wasting our time. Now. After an hour at the house, the agents have no choice but to walk away empty-handed. Sure, yeah, it doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean this problem's going to go away, though, either. Yeah. Yeah? There may be other avenues that the claimant can go down yeah.
talk about that. They've been moving around for hours. They can take further legal advice. I'm sorry if I stand in here upset you or this gentleman here. Do you understand? It's not personal. Yeah, we're not here to judge you or your family situation. All right. All right, sir. All right. See you later. I'm coming out your house, yeah? Bless. It's been a frustrating case for the agents. The house is effectively empty. There's no carpet. The only thing of value is a telly and a keyboard. Other enforcement agencies this, are clearly after them. Judging from how they live, I'd say they probably don't have anything. The case hasn't been resolved today, but the claimant has a right to send the agents back to try again. Doesn't mean and they will. The issue hasn't gone away. The issue hasn't been dealt with. Just because we couldn't resolve it doesn't mean it won't be resolved. So that's quite important as well. Brian looked upset. He looked done. Of course he did. Temporary accommodation, that's good. Oh, wow. Shirley beat her, Shirley beat the case. Salute Shirley, I guess. Hey, Tila. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. We'll leave, hold on, what they, they arguing, yeah?